after only 150 million years of evolution. Different wings for different things. The hummingbird wing hovers like a helicopter and beats at 60 beats per second. Short wings for fast flat and easy getaways. Featherless wings for the lightweight. Long broad wings for effortless soaring over land. Long slender wings for soaring over water. With long wings, one can try and catch a casual meal, hang out with friends, or just soar above it all. Different, different wings for different things. I don't know if you notice, but clams don't fly. Neither do snakes or polar bears. They're not built for it. They don't have wings. Wings are standard equipment for flying animals. Take birds, for instance. There are 9,000 species of birds, and they all have wings. And they're flying mammals, bats. 875 species, and they all have wings. Of course, birds and bats are very different animals. But they do have something in common, besides wings. <laughs> birds and bats have backbones. There's only one other kind of animal with a backbone and wings. But this animal hasn't been around for a long, long time. It's a flying reptile. The pterodactyl. David found out more about it. Flying animal number one, pterodactyls. This is a full-scale model of a flying animal that lived over 60 million years ago. The people at Aero Environment in California have already gotten a model half this size to fly. The animal is a pterodactyl. Now, not much is known about it, except for the fact that it wasn't a bird, and yet it flew. And it was big. How do you know it flew? Well, luckily, they found complete skeletons of about a dozen young pterodactyls. And there's really no doubt that these are the bones of a flying animal. These long, thin, lightweight bones are comparable to those found today in birds and bats. And this would be the long tip bone near the end of the wings. An animal equipped with 36-foot span wings certainly flew. On this drawing, you can see these are the sh shoulder bones right here, and this is the shoulder bone of the giant pterodactyl. How much did it weigh? Well, the paleontologists speculate that it weighed at least 150 to 200 pounds, but of course it could have weighed much more than that, and this makes it by far the largest flying animal uh, known to have existed. Scientists have found over 90 species of pterodactyls, some big, some small, all flyers. 65 million years ago, they might have been as common as bats are today. Flying animal number two, bats. I'm at York University in Toronto, Canada, with biologist Brock Fenton. Wow, it's really small. Can I hold it? Certainly. Now, this is a big brown bat. I always thought that bats were a lot bigger than this. Well, there are over 900 species of bats, and some are a lot bigger. And, of course, many bats are much, much smaller than this. So that these animals, of course, look much larger when they're flying because they need a large wing area to support their body as they're flying. I think I can make him look a lot bigger if we just spread his wings. Then all of a sudden you see that the animal is mainly wings and that the wings are very large. You could also see how small the body is as compared to the wing. That's true, and you also should notice that the hind legs are part of the wing and that the tail is also enclosed by the wing membrane. Under there. Yeah. I think we should let her cold up. We should, they really, as I say, bats just don't like being held like that with their wings spread is it important for flight that the, the body is so small oh yeah there has to be light and the weight is all centered in the middle so that if you were to look at a skinned bat an enormous chest and shoulder muscles and almost nothing you know no hips to speak of at all well
Flying animal number three, birds. Birds are great flyers, but sometimes taking to the wing takes a little practice. Whether you're an eagle, a robin, or a seagull, trying to survive, trying to survive. Gotta get food and stay with your brood and take to the sky, trying to fly. Oh, 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 trying to fly, trying to fly. Let go of the branch, come on, take a chance and take to the sky. to find out about flying is to watch a few birds in action. That's a hawk. Hawks are called raptors, birds of prey. The Minnesota woods is a good place to find them. There was something wrong with this one. What's the matter? What's the matter? I called the Raptor Rehab Center at the University of Minnesota. They said they'd send someone right away. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm the one who called. I'm Laura. I'm from the center. Okay, I found down Laura Laura's a graduate office. student in wildlife biology. She handles emergencies like this all the time. Okay, where is she? She's right over here. Okay. Here she is. Wait, wait. Just, just a second. Okay. Do you think she'll be all right? Well, I really don't know. I'll have to do a complete physical, take her back to the center and see what's wrong. Oh, she's so beautiful. He's breathing really fast. Does that mean he's up she's upset? Yeah, she could be because she's just not, she's not used to being handled in the wild. Way is so big compared to what it looks like folded up. This is the bad wing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a break here right near the joint. And do you think it's just this wing that's got a fracture or something? I think that's probably the main problem there. We'll probably need to take an X-ray to correctly evaluate the, what what's going on in this ring. Can you fix the wing? Will she probably be okay? Just fine. Okay, well, here's the x-ray of the bird that we just had on the table. You can see the bones, the outlines of the bones in the bird's body. If you look at this, you can see here's the bird's head, the neck, the wings here on either side, and the legs. And if you look kind of close, you can see um, that their wings are similar to our arms. Here is the single bone by our shoulder, which is the humerus, which is right here. So from my shoulder to my elbow is humerus mm -hmm. and then this is the elbow and these are the two bones in our forearm and then here is our wrist and these are the digits in our fingers but only they're elongated so that the feathers the primary feathers can be attached to them so their bones are just like our bones well not really because they're a flying machine they need to be light and their bones are thinner walled and hollow and they have small bone structures that give the internal bone more support so that it's sturdier on landing and takeoffs, but it's lightweight for flying. I see. Okay, let's see if we can find the break. You think you can see it there? There it is. Okay, good. See, and, and where this, where the break is, is it's right next to another bone of the body. So it's broken right about here? Mm-hmm, near like the joint. And what we can do now, instead of going in and putting a pin in, is using this as the natural splint. So probably the best thing to do now is go ahead and wrap up that wing and get the bird healthy. Okay, what can I do? All right, what I'm going to do is... When a bird's well enough to fly again, they release it back into the wild. Real slow now. Let me just take a look inside and see where it is. 
Laura had another raptor, Sorry, an eagle, that was really anxious to get going. Okay, now get it out, quick. <laughs> there she goes, all right. <laughs> Pterodactyls, bats, and birds have a lot in common. They all have a backbone and wings, but there's more to it than that. They all have four limbs, like people. You might say, whoa, Steph, we have fingers and arms. They have wings. Let me show you what our skeleton looks like. Fingers, arms, everything is all there. Now, what would have to change to give me some bat wings? Not much. First, my finger bones have to get longer. And my arm gets shorter. Cover with a thin gray skin, and you have a bat wing. Don't look like myself today. Do I? Now for the pterodactyl. You might think reptiles have to be really different, but their wings are made out of the same parts. Really shorten the arm. Let's pull in those fingers, except for the pinky and the fourth finger. Mold them together and make them real long. Slap on some skin and you have a pair of pterodactyl wings. How about a bird? Maybe a duck. The hand changes a lot, but the arm bones are a lot like ours. See? It's still the same stuff. Cover with skin, then feathers. Stephanie the duck. There are, of course, a few problems with this. No more video games, you can forget about playing the piano, and eating is going to be a real challenge. I think I just rather be me. Birds fly. Bats fly. And there was once a kind of flying reptile, the pterodactyl. Birds, bats, and pterodactyls have something in common besides wings. They all have four limbs and a backbone. And so do people. 3 to 1 Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.